Today we would be studying a chapter from geography. Our topic today is related to different kind of resources and their development. We would be studying about different kinds of resources. Everything that is available in our environment, such as petrol, water, air, all these things which are available to us, which can be used to satisfy our needs, provided that it is technologically accessible, economically feasible, and culturally acceptable, can be termed as resource. These resources can be classified in a variety of ways. We can classify them on the basis of origin as biotic and abiotic. We can also classify on the basis of exhaustibility, whether they are renewable or non-renewable. Next, we can also classify on the basis of ownership, whether the resources are owned by an individual, community, nation, or international agencies. We can also classify on the basis of status of development as potential resources or developed stock or reserves. We would first look at the resources on the basis of origin. They can be classified as two groups, biotic resources or abiotic resources. Bio means life, related to biosphere, having life, such as human beings, birds, flora, fauna, fisheries, etc. The other group, abiotic resources. Abiotic resources are all those things that are composed of non-living things, such as mud, rocks, metals, etc. These are things which don't have life. Next, we can classify on the basis of exhaustibility, whether these resources would last forever or would exhaust one day. For an example, take solar energy. Solar energy would last us forever. It would not exhaust and it can be used to create solar-powered lights, mechanical devices and so on. So the resources which can be renewed and reproduced by physical, chemical and mechanical processes are renewable resources. Similarly, let's look at water. Water again is a renewable source of energy maintained by a water cycle and can be used in different ways using technology. Similarly, wind energy can be used. Forests again are renewable source of energy. Once cut, they can grow again. They are not exhaustible. Wildlife can also be replenished. On the other hand, we have non-renewable resources. These resources, once consumed, cannot be replaced. These resources, for an example, oil, coal, etc., cannot be renewed after they have been used. Resources like oil and coal take millions of years in their formation. It takes a long time to create such resources, but they get exhausted in an instant. Next, on the basis of ownership, we have individual resources which are owned by oneself, for an example, home, land. So these are privately owned resources. Community-owned resources, such as farm, temple, water tanks, fish tanks, which is owned by a group of people, similarly public parks or picnic spots, they can be classified as community-owned resources. 
Next, national resources. These are the resources owned by the country. For an example, rivers, which fall inside the boundary of the country. Also, different kind of minerals, metals, which are owned by the nation are called national resources. Next are international resources. For an example, take the oceans. The oceans are not owned by a single country. We might have ownership of around 200 kilometers, but beyond that, not use the resources without the permission of international institutions as they fall under international resources. Next, we see the classification of resources on the basis of status of development. First are the potential resources, which means that they have future potential. They are found in this region, but have not been utilized. For an example, in Rajasthan and Gujarat, they have enormous potential in terms of huge areas of land lying vacant, which can be used for solar and wind energy, but haven't been used so far. If we put windmills and solar panels are established in this area, it would have a huge future benefit and potential. The next group is developed resources. These are the resources which are surveyed and their quality and quantity have been determined for proper utilization. Next is stock. These are the resources that have been surveyed but cannot be used due to lack of technology. For an example, water is a compound that we use every day, but it's composed of two gases, hydrogen and oxygen. Both of these gases are inflammable and can be a rich source of energy. But we don't have the technical know-how on how to separate them and use them. Next, let's look at reserves. The resources that have been surveyed and we know we can use them with the present technology, but the use has not been started are called reserves. For an example, the water in dams. The stored water in dams has been utilized to create electricity, but there could be other potential uses for that. Also, we have wide areas covered in forest, but so far we have not been proactive in utilizing it using the proper technology.